Princess, you mentioned a few things in your teaching tonight, at least three things I heard, and I thank God for the word all the day long. Ephesians chapter 6, and then we're looking at verses 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And the word of God reads, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thou father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And six. Five, servants be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in the singleness of your heart as unto Christ. You may be seated in the presence of the Holy Ghost and all through the testimonies and all through the people of God tonight and the word of God and just sister Adam just reminiscing for a moment before I even go into the gospel. I wrote it down tonight. I said sin, at least grow up from about five or six to a young adult, seeing Nyla grow up from her age to a young adult, TJ getting ready to graduate next year, Ayana getting ready to graduate next year, and Xavier coming out in a couple of years to follow. And I just thank God on tonight being in this ministry, Sister Penny, and seeing you having your baby in your womb, and he come out, and he's a teenager now also. I just thank God tonight for being able to reminisce over our children, and You've always encouraged me, woman of God, and say, well, she always teaches on family, and I'm tying it in tonight about our children, and I'm tying it in tonight about the servants, and I'm tying it in tonight about the fathers and the mothers. And I say, I thank God tonight, princess, for you having confirmation and revelation. Tell your neighbor tonight, tonight the title is The Power of Honor. Look at your next neighbor, say The Power of Honor. God is to be honored and respected at all times, be it good, bad, or ugly. But I want to look at our children tonight. Look with me, if you will, in Ephesians 6, 1, 2, and 3. It says children. I'm saying children. Children. We want to be, we are dust, but we sometimes act like children. But I'm talking to the children within us tonight, and I'm talking to the children that are present tonight. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. Obey your parents in the Lord is the first point that I want to bring out tonight. And honor, honor means to follow their rules tonight and the word of God that's in your parents' life. God wants us to honor that word that's in your parent, the power of honor. See, in your parents' home, they have the say-so. Especially if they're paying all the bills, Jaquincia, if they're putting clothes on your back and putting food in your mouth and giving you an allowance for your chores or just generally putting clothes on your back because some teenagers work and some do not, but in generally putting clothes on your back and feeding you and just giving you money. They are in charge. It's their home. It's their say-so. So the children have to abide by the rules of their fathers and their mothers and we have to abide by the rules of the house of the Lord we have to follow our pastor as pastor gives us the word of God first we looked at obey your parents in the Lord then we want to look at honor thy father and thy mother the first commandment with promise we want to love our family we want to love and respect our parents we want to assist our parents we want to assist the parents or the guardian or the grandparents on tonight Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, obey your parents in the Lord. Uh, honor thy father and thy mother. You may have a spiritual mother and father. You know, we have people in the church that love us like mothers and fathers that we respect. So we are to honor them. Number three, we're going to look at it will be well with thee. Then ye may live long. God can allow us to live long lives in the earth based on his choice, based on his word and his promises. 
long and prosperous lives and lives of abundance. God is in charge of that. God promised us some things, and we don't always make it to the age of 70 or the age of 120, but God has promised us if we honor our parents, if we honor our mothers and our fathers, we may live some long lives in the earth. Let's look at the fathers tonight. Do you see who God put in charge? God established the father over more than 2,000 years ago. It tells us in the word, he tells us to provoke not your children to wrath. And he's saying for the father's minister way and talking along with the mother, stay humble. But you see, God chose the fathers to be in charge. He chose Adam to be first. He didn't put Eve over Adam, but he put Adam in charge of the garden. And then he added Eve to his side. And in the text, God chose the father to be in charge. It says by humility. And by the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. The Bible says that in Proverbs 22 and 4. Parents and guardians tonight, we cannot allow our parents and guardians to drink. We can't allow them to club. We can't allow them to get high with our children, nieces or nephews, and then we want them to have the utmost respect. Can you gr agree with me on tonight? You can't drink, get drunk with them club with them, get high with them, and then you want them to respect you to the utmost because you're setting a double-minded example. You can't do these things and then expect your children to have the utmost respect. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, it's not going to happen. If we have any common sense, we must teach them about Jesus, his will and his way. His word will stand when everything else will fail. No it's not about what Auntie did. It's not what, what, about what Uncle Bobo did. We have to teach them the word of God. See, don't put down the mother in front of the father. Don't put down the father in front of the children. Don't talk about the other parent in front of the children. Don't disrespect the father. Don't disrespect the mother in front of your children. If you want to bring up some God-fearing children that are going to submit and have the utmost respect for you. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, don't do it. Don't do it. If you don't have anything good to say about the mother or father, don't say nothing at all. The old folks taught us, if you can't say anything good, just don't say anything at all. The power of honor on tonight. Do not teach them to gossip. Do not teach your kids to backbite. Do not teach your kids to be nosy. Set biblical examples for our children. Because as they stated earlier tonight, the children are watching everything that we do. They're watching everything that we say. They're paying attention to everywhere we go. They're watching what time of night we get out, what time of day we come back in. They're watching everything that we do. You may not think they're watching. But once they get grown and they grow up, they can recollect on back mama and daddy did so-and-so, so-and-so. And, -so, so -and -so. Uh, I remember when, but I'm telling you tonight, the power of honor. They're watching every little thing. Uh, they're watching you under a spiritual and a natural microscope on tonight. See, it's easy to act as a foolish man or a foolish woman. They, they don't know anything, Pam. They're just foolish. Because you can't tell them nothing because they know everything. But they really don't know anything. But you can't tell them nothing. But guess what? The king of kings uh, and the Lord of lords can tell them what he needs them to know. And then on tonight, the Bible tells us in Proverbs, it says in Proverbs 22 and 6, he tells us, train up a child in a way that they should go. And when they owe, he will not depart from it. What are you saying tonight? The military has a boot camp of training and preparation. And the saints were talking about it on tonight. See, they're getting the mindset ready to think and be quick on the feet. They're getting ready to do battle just in case of war. See, we're making them tough and we're making them strong. Getting that physical man ready to do what God is calling us to do. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, the power of honor. This scripture is for every child who has Christ in their life. And if he's not in their life, you can invite Christ into your life. So we got to bring them up in the admonition of the Lord, the nurture of the Lord. Anybody in here grow plants? Wave your hand if you grow some live plants on tonight. 
You know how you have to nurture your plant. Some people may go to Walmart and stick the little feeding tube in the plant, and then you're going to add some water to the plant. You're going to add some sunlight to the plant. That's how you nurture your plant. Some people uh, talk Keisha to their plant. They talk to them like they call them cuz, or they may call them a friend or whatever, but they nurture their plant. They talk to the plant, and the plant grows like a wildflower, but they grow out so blossom, so pretty. Start out just a little seed and a little bud, but then it grows out into the big old pretty green, just a big old pretty green flower pot or make you a beautiful bed of flowers. Tell your neighbor on tonight, say the power of honor. God is to be honored and respected at all times, as I said earlier. Be it good, bad, or ugly. Let's look at the servants. We looked at the children. We looked at the fathers, and we're going to look at the servants tonight, and we're about to wrap this gospel up. Be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh. Ephesians 4 and 11 tells us, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers with fear and trembling and singleness of heart as unto Christ, serving with respect and honor, treating your master the way the word of God instructs us to we got to have the utmost respect for our masters we got to have the utmost respect for the servant that's in the position of the office of the lord how many know that god ordained the office god put man or woman in position it's not man or woman putting people in position but god does the positioning the office is already established and assigned and god allow us to be in that position tell your neighbors to neighbor you got a natural master, which is going to be the shepherd of this house, which is our pastor, Pastor Kiner. Then you have a heavenly master, which is in the spirit realm, which is God. So we thank God tonight that God is a balanced God. He'll give you a natural master to teach you his ways, uh, and the heavenly master will teach him his ways uh, as he teaches us the ways of God. Tell your neighbors and neighbor three scriptures of honor on tonight. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 9 and 10, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy bonds be filled with plenty and thy presence shall burst out with new wine. As long as we keep honoring God with our first fruits, uh, we will never run out of anything. Uh, as long as we keep giving, God will bring back plenty. As long as we will keep giving, God will give us an overflow of abundance, and we will never run out of anything. You won't even have room to keep everything that you already have. You'll begin to outgrow your area that you're in. You may be in an apartment. You may be in a home. But you'll begin to outgrow that space, and God will expand you to another location because you don't have room to receive you got to bless somebody else this is the power and the honor of god on tonight tell your neighbor a neighbor don't be stingy don't be stingy don't be stingy the bible tells us in romans 12 and 10 uh, be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another so you can't confide keisha and you can't confide Penny, and you can't confide Sister Adams to everybody in the body of Christ. Uh, but God will give you somebody that has some power like you got some power. And y'all can shop on one another. You're not going to gossip on one another. You're not going to mistreat one another. You're not going to backbite on one another. But God will give you somebody that will confide in. Your business will be left right where you dropped it off. Tell your neighbor, your neighbor, the power of honor. The Holy Ghost is in this house. Ephesians 6 tells us tonight in the Bible, it says in 2 and 3, Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Huh? You may not have this, and you may not have that, but long as you got the king of kings huh, and the lord of lords, huh, and you honor your master, which is your pastor, and you honor God, huh, which is large and in charge, huh, God will bless you uh, like never before. Uh, it may not be time uh, for you to receive what you may want, uh, but God is looking at your wish list, uh, and God can bring your wish list to pass. Uh, tell your neighbor on tonight, uh, says some people want some husbands, uh, some people want some wives, uh, some people want a husband and a wife and a baby in a carriage, but some people want no husband, some people want no wife. But God will honor your wish list. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, wear the shoe. If the shoe fit wet, 
Everything ain't for everybody. God done ordained some of us to live like Paul. And God done ordained some of us to live like the word say. Marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. So if you've been honored to honor God in the word of God, you got to do what thus said the Lord. If you know you can't contain yourself for whatever the reason may be, whether you be male or female, it's best to do what God has said in the word uh, and quit playing footsie. Go on and be Mr. and Mrs. Hallelujah. We ain't got time in the way to be playing footsie. Some of us of a certain age, when you get a certain age, you ought to get some wisdom. Hallelujah. We ought to get some wisdom. I'm not talking to people 35 and under, even though they can hear me. When we get a certain age, we should wise up. Put a ring on it. Put a name on it. Put a license on it. That's going to honor her. He said, when you find a wife, you find a good thing and obtain the favor of the Lord. When a man find you, don't you go looking for him because you might find the wrong thing. Hallelujah. Don't you look. Let him find you. When it's time, he'll find you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Biblical manners to honor God tonight. Honor God with our heart and not just lip service. I know I ain't the only one, but I can't speak for you. Have you said something to God before and be like, okay, God, I'm going to do this this time, and then when that time come, you didn't keep your word. I didn't honor him, Tosha, with my, my heart and my lips. I said it with my mouth, but I didn't honor it in my heart. So we got to honor God in our heart, not just with lip service, so we can be seen and our lips be moving like on a movie. Some words coming out, and we don't hear nothing. Hallelujah. Tinkling, simmering, and sounding brass. Honor God with our obedience and not our disobedience. I'm not at the church to know what you're not doing. I'm at the church to learn and to perfect and edify. Because that's the power and honor of God. Minister William, don't get in your business. You will never say, I got in your business. I only walk in when you open the door and let me in. Because that's the power of honor. If you don't invite me in, I'm not coming in. I told Don today, I don't like sitting over folks' house. They got the same thing I got. A door to go in, a couch to sit on. You got cable, you got direct, or AT&T, or a box, or a digital antenna. It's a television. Same thing I got. Why am I going to go sit over your house for? That's what I know when I was a little girl. I don't have time for all that. Now, when it comes to ministry, that's another level. Tell the Lord, thank you on tonight. Honor them with your heart and not lip service. Honor with our obedience and not disobedience. Honor with our service to others in ministry and in the community. We thank God tonight that we don't, we're not a church that's selfish. We serve in the community. We serve in ministry. We serve others. Pastor go to the hospital, to the prison, all the saints that are going. We're serving in the body of Christ. That's the power of honor. We're not just thinking about ourselves. And like people on TV, they need to know tonight, as they say, some of these people that they watch, Sister Pam, they're not going to come one time to your hospital bed to pray over you or pray for you, but they will reach out and say, send an offering. But they're not going to come and see about you. They way in Washington, D.C. They're not coming down south to see about you. But I know a man by the name of Dr. Gerald Kiner would break his neck in the Lord to go out to the hospital. And as Sister Adams was sharing with me today, every ministry is not everybody's ministry. Some people have the gift to go and minister to people in the prison, on the streets, under the bridge, or wherever they may be, but that's not everybody's ministry. So don't get mad because it's an honor for you to serve in the office that God has put you in. Whatever you're able to do, don't compare what you can do for God against what somebody else is doing. You do what God has anointed and appointed you to do in the Lord. You maybe can only get a prayer through. That's more than enough. You can only fast. That's more than enough. You can only clean up. That's more than enough. You can only cook. That's more than enough. Or you can't cook as we joke and have fun. But you can go to make sure we still eat. Let's look at this Bible and we wrapping it up. Every time, I'm going to go into Matthew 25. Every time we come together, we honor the Lord. Every time we come to prayer, we honor the Lord. Every time we worship in spirit and in truth, we honor the Lord. Every time we do what is right uh, or what is righteous, we honor the Lord. Every time we help somebody uh, that's less fortunate than we are, we honor the Lord. Every time we visit the sick, uh, we honor the Lord. Every time we visit the prison, uh, we honor the Lord. Every time we witness to the lost, uh, we honor the Lord. Uh, tell your neighbor on the night uh, in Matthew 25. 
and 34 through 40, and we're done. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and we gave me meat. Uh, ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. Uh, I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Uh, I was naked, and ye clothed me. Uh, I was sick, and ye visited me. Uh, I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, uh, Lord, we went salt with thee and hungered, and fed thee or thirsty, and gave thee drink. Uh, when sought we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, or clothed thee. Uh, when we saw thee sick, uh, or in prison, and came unto thee, uh, and the king shall answer, and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, uh, insomuch as ye have uh, done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, uh, ye have done it unto me. Uh, I'm talking about the power of honor tonight. Uh, little girls, uh, Obey your parents. Uh, little young ladies, obey your parents. Uh, little young men, obey your parents. Uh, you can live a long life in the earth. Uh, you can live a prosperous life in the earth. Uh, what are you saying tonight? Uh, serve while you can. Because uh, night going to come uh, and you won't be able to serve. Uh, tell your neighbor to neighbor. I'm talking about the presence uh, and the power of honor. Tell your neighbor on tonight uh, the power of honor. God is so good, uh, and God is so glad. Uh, you can stand to your feet on tonight. Uh, Jesus had to honor us. Uh, Jesus had to honor all of our sins. Uh, even as you make your way to the altar, uh, he had. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Tonight we're going to Proverbs. Proverbs 19 and verse 4. And as you find it, I will go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come boldly to your throne of grace, God. I come, God, knowing nothing but Jesus and himself crucified. I ask you, God, let me decrease, God, to increase, God, stretch out in me all the more, God. Father, I thank you for Pastor Counter, God, the man of God that's so awesome in you, God, that shares his poor pit with the others, God, to let us use our gift, God, that you have put inside us, God. I thank you for him, God. Now, Father God, I ask you to have me be kind your cross, God, and let me speak this word you have put down inside of me, God. Let me speak it to your people, God. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. 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 Proverbs 19 and starting at the fourth verse, and it reads, well, make many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbors. Once again, wealth make many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbors. You may be seated. And the title of my lesson tonight is, Don't Mess It Up. Don't Mess It Up. As I began to speak to God and God began to speak to me, he was telling me, he said, that wealth and riches are in the house of God. And he mean this house right here, Jesus People's Church. But he said, don't mess it up. He said he's going to give back into you so you can give back into the kingdom. He said, receive it. The more you give, the more he's going to bless you. The Spirit of God said unto me, he said, Stop holding on to those two little dollars that you have. That's not enough money anyway. But the word tell us in Psalms 15 and 10, it says, For every beast of the forest is man, and the cattle upon a thousand hills belongs to God. So you holding on to something that you don't even have enough for anyway. God said that some of us should have already been millionaires, and now we should be working on being a billionaire. God said the wealth is in the house. God said he's going to build up a kingdom, a children, his children, a children that will be obedient to him. 
a cheering that when you get out of the get out of the shot, when you receive this wealth that I'm going to give you. And he said, warn them, don't mess it up. God wants you to be a good steward of this wealth because God's going to give it to you. There's no other way that you can get it, but God's going to give it to you. They don't understand how you got it, but God's going to give it to you. And God said, and he told me to tell you, he said, don't mess it up. Thank you, God. Don't mess it up, saint. And he also said, and he told me, and he said, when I give you this wealth, he said, I don't want you to buy every shoe in the store. I don't want you to buy every dress you see. I don't even want you to buy all them pocketbooks. But I want you to give it back into the kingdom. As you sow it back into the kingdom, I'm going to give it more to you. If you sow it back into the kingdom, I'm going to give it more to you. Bless your name, God. God says, can I trust you with this wealth? Can I trust you there with this wealth that I'm getting ready to give to you? And Sister Kanita already talked about it. She says to transfer. God get God out of us. He got a little of us. Say, God getting ready to transfer that well. He getting ready to transfer to you because you can handle it. Once again, a long time ago, God tried to give you that wealth and you can handle it. Now you've grown up a little bit more and you can handle that wealth God getting ready to give to you. It's the real transfer that's God going to give to you. Thank you, God. Listen to this. He said that people's in the world. He said that people's in the world, they played a lot of them. But some of them got sense. They got sense to give some of that money that they don't want gambling into the church. They believe, they said they prayed to God and God gave it to them. But God didn't give it to them. They want it. And they got a little bit of sense to give some of that money that they want into the church. It's their wealth transfer. All that money they got out there, it don't belong to them no way. It belongs to the children of God. It belongs to us and God getting ready to give it to us. And we thank God for the wealth that he's going to give to us. Now, when God gives you this wealth, I want you to stay obedient. I want you to stay humble to God. I want you to stay humble to the man of God. Because God's getting ready to give you some wealth. And don't you mess it up. Warning, don't you mess it up. Good God. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy to be prayed. Thank you, God. Now listen to this. You're going to make many friends. Oh, yeah, you're going to make many friends. But where were they at when you needed them? Where were they at when you was in the hospital? Where were they at when you needed something to eat? Where were they at when you needed a ride? Where were they at when you was hungry? And when I got all this, it came to my mind that Pastor Counter preached a message one time. He said, I come through friends. We got some come through friends up here in this church. We got some come through friends that get our back. We got some come through friends that hold us up. We got some come through friends. Good God Almighty, he's worthy to be praised. Now God also, he said, he said, be watchful and stay humble. He said, don't let the right hand know what the left hand is doing. Thank you, God. Because he's going to transfer it over to you. It's already in the atmosphere. It's already taking place. It's already coming to some of us. In the name of Jesus. Now when God gives you this transfer, he don't want you to get big hit. He don't want you to get beside yourself. Stay like you are. Good God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy to be prayed. Now, God also told me, he said, some of y'all got some songs down in you, and some of y'all are rappers. Bum, 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 bum. You rappers, and you can rap better than Snoop Dogg. 
You know who Snoop Dogg is. They call him Snoopy Snoopy Dogg, the rapper. But you can rap better than him because you got the hiccup of the bossy kid and the voice. You got the anointing upon your life. So every rap song you're trying to sing, God going to put the anointing upon that rap song. And it's going to be a hit. Thank you, Jesus. The will transfer God getting ready to give it to you. Take this rip transfer and do what God said. Do with it. Thank you, Jesus. Don't just steal the money, but be obedient. Put it back into the house. Thank you, God, the house of God. Bless your name, God. Now listen to this. The wealth of the wicked. It's laid up for the jealous. And guess who the jealous is? I'm the jealous, you the jealous, you the jealous. All us are jealous in Jesus. Trying to walk right for Jesus. Trying to talk right for Jesus. Trying to live right for Jesus. Warning, don't mess it up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. And then he told me again, he said in Proverbs 10 and 22, he said, the blessing of the Lord, it make it rich and add no sorrow with it. Now listen to this. If the wealth going to make it rich, it ain't going to add no sorrow to it, then it must have came from God. Good God Almighty, then listen to this. God said, I'm preparing you. I'm preparing you to receive the wealth. I'm preparing you. Yo, heart, I'm preparing you. Now listen, Proverbs 16 and 1 said, The preparation of the heart in the man and the answer of the tongue is from God. God is preparing you, sisters and brothers. He preparing you for the transfer of the wealth in the atmosphere. Receive this wealth that God got for you. Receive it. Thank you, God. Don't mess it up. Warning. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. Now listen to this. We got children in this atmosphere. And they get a little more shun in little shot. These children are hungry for the word of God. They are hungry for the word, want to be in church, want to do these praise things for the Lord. They are word. They are hungry for the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. I wish when I was a little child, I was hungry for the word of God. I would have been much farther than I am now. But that's okay. God got me where he want me to be at. Thank you, Jesus. Warning. Don't mess it up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, when I was talking to the Lord, he said this. He said, some of them think they need a hearing aid. No, you don't need no hearing aid. You just need to hear what God is telling you. You sometimes be trying to not to hear what God is telling you. It's a ringing in your ear. God is talking to you. And sometimes when somebody talking about you, it's a ringing going on. Thank you, Jesus. It's worthy to be praised. And I think I done cracked the code. I think I cracked that code, y'all. I think I did. You know why? I see what Pastor Counter is doing. I see how that man of God is getting blessed. He get the wealth, he put it back into the church. He gets some more wealth, he put it back into the church. I think I cracked the code. The more wealth you get, the more wealth you put in the kingdom. The more wealth God gives to you, the more wealth you put in the kingdom. Thank you, God. The code been broken. Good God Almighty, the code been broken. Thank you, Jesus. Warning, don't mess it up. Don't mess it up, child. Now let me talk to the church folks. I got to talk to the church folks a little bit. The church folks are those traditional folks. 
The one said, just go to church, cause mama said, go to church. But we are the kick out of the world, son of the sick out of the world, son. We are the children of God that seek out of the world, son, filled with the spirit of God. We are the children of God, the most high children of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We are his children. And God said, he said, be careful how you treat the little children because they are watching you. They seeing everything you're doing. They hearing everything you're saying. So be careful how you treat them. Thank you, God. Good God Almighty. God finna open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room to receive. Thank you, God. You got so much over here. You got so much over there. Good God Almighty. It's running over, running over in the name of Jesus. But God wants you to bless somebody too. Don't keep all the wealth for yourself. Bless somebody else. Bless who God tell you to bless. You can do that. You know the spirit of God. You know the word of God. You know how God work. You know how God move. Listen to the spirit of God. Warning. Don't mess it up. Thank you, Jesus. 